We're going to talk about a subject that's very dear to my heart, which is hair loss in women. I think it's a subject that's almost a taboo. Most women out there, if they're experiencing hair loss, simply don't want to talk about it. Even though it's a very traumatic experience for a male to undergo hair loss, I think it can even be more traumatic for a woman who's undergoing hair loss because simply they don't have the peer support, they, don't, they can't look around and go, you know what, this other person's losing hair, therefore I'm going to talk about it. It's almost something that remains silent. And in my opinion, it's important to sort of uh, open up that silence and be able to discuss uh, exactly what is involved with women who lose hair, some of the considerations that you have to think about, maybe some medical options, what surgical techniques that we have that are available for women, and just sort of walk you through the whole process. Let's first talk about uh, hair loss in women. I want to sort of divide that category into women that lose hair premenopausally, before menopause, and women that lose hair postmenopausally or after menopause. So let's start with women who are losing hair uh, before menopause. There are a lot of conditions out there that could lead to hair loss in your situation. And I certainly don't want to go through this in a, in a cyclopedic fashion because there are too many out there, a lot of which may not apply to you. But at least it gives you some basis of education for, from which you can seek consultation. Some of the more prevalent conditions out there that may cause hair loss in women include a low iron level. So for example, if your menstruation is you're losing significant blood and you're not getting iron replacement, the iron, uh, low iron levels itself could be a cause of your hair loss. Other examples could be, for example, hormonal imbalances where your androgen or that's your testosterone, estrogen levels are elevated, and a simple blood test can, it can determine that. Low thyroid levels can also cause that. Um, other syndro syndromic problems such as something called polycystic ovarian disease where there's facial hair, there's other masculinizing attributes could be a cause and, and, and again there's so many out there. Um, even psychologic conditions where you're pulling your hair out called trichotillomania or other dermatologic conditions such as alopecia areata where you're losing little, uh, little circles of hair um, and uh, scarring alopecia or, or hair loss. In other words, there's a lot of skin conditions in addition to hormonal or other imbalances that could be causing it. Oftentimes, a consultation with a dermatologist, and I work hand in hand with dermatologists. I am not a dermatologist. I am a surgeon, but I do, and I am very sensitive about hair loss in women. So I oftentimes work with dermatologists. I work with internists. Uh, and family doctors who can do some of the basic blood evaluations. I can help guide them. I've also got preset letters that go through some of the key points if they're not familiar with looking at some of the common uh, blood findings that can cause hair loss in women. I can give you an article that I've written about hair loss in women that can sort of uh, familiarize you more than maybe what I'm telling you about in this short video. Um, those are some of the basic things that can cause hair loss in women when you are younger. After menopause, all those conditions also can exist. And the difference also is that um, it is unfortunately sometimes more common. And trying to really flesh out exactly what the problem is may not be um, as necessary in someone postmenopausal because it's just as the hormones become slightly unbalanced, that can lead to it, which can be corrected as well. But it's a little bit more common to have hair loss after menopause than before menopause. There is hope out there and there are solutions and what I want to talk to you about today are some of the medical options that are available for, for women. Now obviously just like for men if you go on the internet you're going to find a heck of a lot of, of products out there that probably in my opinion are pretty confusing and also in my opinion are probably not going to work for you only because it's, some of them are gimmicky. Now, I don't want to speak on any particular name of a product. If you've been having tremendous success with some products, and that's wonderful, I certainly don't suggest you to stop it. But those are things that you just have to keep in mind. There is really only one FDA-approved medication for women right now, and that is Rogaine, which is the brand name, or Minoxidil, which is generic. Minoxidil or Rogaine is a product that is used to applied on the scalp itself to help regrow hair. It does take about six months to a year for that to occur and if you do stop the Rogaine it potentially 
um, can, well, actually over a period of that six months to a year, you can start shedding that hair once again. Rogaine doesn't necessarily regrow all the hair, it doesn't necessarily stop the hair shedding, but it oftentimes can at least slow down the process significantly. There are two concentrations of minoxidil. There's 2% and there's 5%. 2% is generally used for women and 5% for men. However, for people that are having significant hair loss, women are having significant shedding of hair, I usually, not usually, but I can put you on a 5% um, application just to sort of speed things along. Some of the studies have shown that after about a year, if women use 2% or 5%, the results are about the same, so ultimately it won't matter. The only difference is that 5% can speed up the benefits for you faster sometimes than 2%, but the only risk is some reversible uh, hair growth or other side effects uh, that are not as favorable in terms of uh, masculinizing hair growth, and if that does occur, then obviously you would scale back to a 2%. The half-life of Rogaine or Minoxidil is about 22 hours, so um, it can be used once a day. At this point, we still recommend twice a day, which is a traditional way to take care of uh, hair loss. And that is an important um, uh, adjunct, if you will, or principal uh, treatment for women that have hair loss. The surgical options for hair loss, it all depends on understanding the donor area. That's back here. The donor area has to not be also significantly shedding hair, otherwise it's an unstable platform for us to move hair forward. There are really three types of hair loss in women, although there's many permutations of hair loss, there's even a male pattern hair loss in women. Uh, one type of hair loss in women is sort of a diffuse pattern hair loss where the hairline is still strong. And that is, you sort of see a general thinning going across there, and there's a Ludwig scale to talk about the types of, of, of significance of hair loss, which is also on our website. You can also lose the temporal, uh, this area here in the hairline, as well as lose and have a diffused uh, hair thinning. The third option sometimes seen, which is a little less common, is almost a Christ Christmas tree pattern. If you bend your hair down forward, you'll see the base of the Christmas tree here, and it tapers to the apex on the back, and you can have that kind of hair loss. The way that we do hair transplant in women in terms of donor harvesting is the same as in men. It's a very gentle process. The day with us is a very nice process. You don't have uh, discomfort whatsoever because we use a, a intravenous uh, sedation cocktail where you just don't feel pain. And we transplant the hair forward. Now there are a couple things that are very important that I want you to understand. Number one is the way that I create the hairline and the temporal sweep in women are qui is quite different. The way that I design and frame the, the, the face is, is very different from a male because in a male, if I create a female pattern, it will look prepubescent. If I create a male pattern in a female, it will look like you're having male pattern baldness. So I want to create a very strong temporal frame that comes this way, and I recreate all the angles of the temporal area to match exactly the way that the, the sweep and the shape of the, of the hairline occurs here. The other thing that's very important is if you look at a female hairline, they're oftentimes very different from a male uh, hairline. Some of the attributes that are different for a female hairline is that it's not just a straight hairline that goes forward. Sometimes there's a little bit of a small widow's peak. There's oftentimes a spiral pattern that goes forward or a cowlick that sweeps around. And that little subtlety, I recreate. I recreate every single hair pattern in the frontal hairline that would replicate how a female hairline grows naturally. The other thing that's very different from our approach is that oftentimes women are not satisfied with the density that's cap that is achievable with um, hair restoration. We use a procedure called combination grafting, a technique that I've perfected with my hair transplant coordinator, Amina Karamanovsky. And with this technique, we're really able to achieve significantly greater density into the central scalp where there is that potentially diffuse hair loss. During a consultation, we'll talk to you more about some of the subtleties of our technique, and we can see if that technique is applicable for you, whether it be beneficial for you. And I really look forward to meeting you in our surgery center, in our office, to discuss your hair loss and hopefully help you with the situation, whether it be medically and or surgically.